Chapter 3, Road Trip Dear Dad, I'm riding from the road. Don't worry, I'm not driving. Ha ha. We're on our way to Oklahoma, as you know. Mom said I had to email you and wish you Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay, now she says I have to say more than that. Tap, tap, tapping, because I can't think of anything. Okay, how's the weather? Just kidding, we left ten minutes ago. Really, though, I'm good. Wheels are good. See you in the summer, Ellie. It's already been more than three hours, and we're only just nearing Memphis. Tennessee is so freaking long. I mean, it's not like I have a problem sitting, obviously. But the DVD player broke last month, and there's nothing to do back here but watch the river appear and disappear again. If you've never seen the Mississippi, you're not missing anything. The M I double S I double S I double P I is ugly. It's murky on a good day, and winter it's toilet water. At least there's a big, beautiful lake where we're headed. If I play it right, maybe Mom will let me do more than sit with my feet in it this summer. Water is the only place my body isn't the enemy. In water, I'm weightless. I can float free. I'm starving. Let's get past Memphis. But the barbecue's in Memphis. I saw an episode of the great food truck race where they went to Memphis. I want to go to Lenard's pit, get a whole pile of their barbecue pork and shoestring fries. I yell out the exit number at every mile marker for 10 miles. It works. We're back on the road in less than half an hour with greasy paper bags full of food. Why do barbecue joints always give you those tissuey napkins that tear to shreds when you try to use them? Mom's such a pushover, but she's good at road tripping like this. Let's make it an adventure, she'll say, whenever we have to do something half miserable, like go for leg brace fittings or clothes shopping. Clothes shopping is the worst, with mom following me into every fitting room and helping me try on jeans, as if anybody wants her mom to watch her try on jeans, but so she somehow makes it easier. We'll skip school, take the day, eat picnics in the park, or get Auntie Anne's pretzel nuggets at the mall, and take long drives with the windows down. She can spin anything. I take a bite of my lemon square from Lenard's, and powdered sugar dissolves like cotton candy in my mouth. It reminds me of lemon cream pie. I remember that's the what won the pie contest at Meemaw's church a few years ago. Every year on the first weekend in May, Bethlehem Methodist has a big fish fry and silent auction and every year they have a bake-off, and the best pie wins. It's kind of a big deal. There's a $100 prize and an award ceremony, and everyone remembers who won last year and the year before, going all the way back to when the contest first started. I've always been stuck at home, still in school and wishing I could be there. I do some basic math. The bake-off is in a little more than three months from now. I'll be there, and I can finally enter. And I can win. I know I can. Every famous chef has to start somewhere. Shoot, Mom says when a blob of red sauce falls on her pants. I look down at my wheelchair tray. I forget sometimes that other humans don't come as well equipped. I've got a hundred bottles of beer on the wall. Ellie, no. I sing louder. We're in Arkansas now and stuck in traffic outside Conway. Take one down, pass it around, 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Ellie, I will put this car over right this minute if you don't stop. 99 bottles of beer on the... All right, if you don't like my choice of music, you can pick the station. Anything but country. We live in the country music capital of the world. Not anymore, I say, and catch her eye in the mirror. I shoot her a thumbs up. Not anymore, she says, and smiles and spins the dial. Two years ago, when we were driving to Eufaula for Christmas, the van broke down in the middle of nowhere. It was snowing. Mom's cell phone died. It's the one and only time I've ever heard her curse. She made up for it that day, though. All the four-letter words. I don't think she knew I could hear but she was standing in the gravel, kicking at the tire and yelling expellatives for all she was worth. After she calmed down, or maybe just ran out of steam, she put her hazards on and set out the little orange triangles she keeps in the back. She wrapped a blanket around me and put the iPad on Nick Jr. app. 
It took her an hour, and she lost her hat in the snow, but she did it. She changed that flat in the freezing cold middle of nowhere America. When she climbed back in, we sat for a minute and listened to Christmas music while the van warmed up, and she wiped the black off her hands with wet wipes. It was nice after it wasn't scary anymore, and then we drove on. If there's one thing I know about Mom, it's that she can do just about anything. I'm hoping that's still true. I'm hoping she can help Grandpa, help him in the way he needs, I mean. Fixing a tire's not quite the same as fixing a person. We hit Oklahoma just as the sun goes down, and it's everything I remember. Flat as a pancake for miles and miles. The roads are bumpy with tar crisscrossing over the cracks like a zebra's stripes. My chair rattles in its harness, and I have to put away the book I'm reading so I don't puke. There's no snow here, and I can see the red dirt edging up against the trees when we turn off the highway. It's big pines and oaks, taller than anything we have back home, kind of like driving into Pooh's 100-acre wood. We turn off Route 9 onto the gravel road that leads into Meemaw's and Grandpa's neighborhood. When they first moved here, after he quit his job in the Midwest City, he called it a retirement village. He said it wasn't a trailer park if nothing ever moved. And he was right. People here tuck their trailers up under these trees and lock them down with cement foundations and wood porches so you can hardly tell the wheel where the, where the wheels used to go. They build sheds and fill them with tools for their gardens and then fence it all in. When we pull into 713 Alcola Drive, the headlights snag on the smashed up front of Grandpa's forward. And it's so pitiful, I look away, down at my chair, creaking as we bump over the gravel, trailers, trucks, bodies. There's so many things wanting to move that the air feels electric with it, like when the hair stands up on your arms before a lightning strike. But I'm so tired. All I want is a bed and a blanket. If Mom's going to break the news to me, Ma, that we're here to stay... I'll need to be ready and rested because there's sure enough going to be a storm.